Hello, ladies. I'm just going down to the dock to do a video for you. So, come along. <laughs> it's so nice outside. It's a beautiful evening. So I want to do it outside. I'm hoping my camera is not. There's a little lake we're on. I'm on a little pier thing. Um, dock. I guess you want to call it a dock. So now I'm just going to put it on my tripod. How are you doing this beautiful day? I love summer. I, <laughs> I mean, I like August, but August makes me already regret that summer's going, which is crazy, right? So that's kind of the way it is. Hello, I'm facing the sun, so my eyes are gonna squint a little bit. This is, what a beautiful, look at the sky, huh? Woo, such a great day. Such a great day. Okay, we're gonna talk about vegan and vegetarian sources of protein because a lot of people um, kind of get this idea that, oh my God, what do you eat for protein? How do you get enough protein? The thing is, is that's been a story that's made up um, from the farming industry, of course, to sell their product, which is the cattle and the meat, right? And then also the grains needing um, all those grains was, I don't know when that started, the 70s or something too, because of the agriculture. And it was told that, you know, we need to promote this, we need to promote that because we need to make more money in this industry. Um, so let's go over some vegan, I never worry about it. The thing is, is that once I studied nutrition and found out that people are deficient in minerals, more in minerals, vitamins, essential fatty acids, than protein. And when you go to personal trainers or when you go to some of these, um, people who talk about how to lose weight or talk, yeah, basically it's when you want to lose weight or certain plans, they talk almost always about fat protein and carbohydrates to me craziest thing I'm gonna tell you why why you should not divide things up like that protein I mean fat I could eat um, a bunch of canola oil genetically modified oil that's really 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 bad for us lots of omega-6 terrible for our health that's a fat do you want me to measure that I mean, how stupid are avocados? Avocados are good, healthy fat for us. Measuring how many grams of fat I get in the day if I'm eating bad fat doesn't make any bloody difference. I'm eating bad fats. It's terrible for my health, right? Um, carbohydrates. Sugar, pure sugar is a carbohydrate. I can measure certain carbohydrate grams of carbohydrates I eat in a day, but if I'm eating nothing but junky stuff like donuts and ice cream and sugar, candies, what's the freaking point? Or if I measure um, protein and I'm eating things like bacon or deep fried chicken wings or something, that's ridiculous. We really got to wake up and see how ridiculous we've been programmed. So what you want to focus on, what the cells need, the food that the cells need are vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, essential fatty acids, amino acids, amino acids are the building blocks to proteins. Protein is amino acids, made up of amino acids. Do you need a complete protein to be considered a protein? So there's some vegetables, of course, vegetables have protein, that are proteins, but they're not a complete protein, as the fitness gurus or whatever say. The old belief was you must eat a complete protein or a combination of beans and rice, which makes a complete protein, to have it work for you as a protein. That's not really true. Within a day, within a day, if you eat a wide combination of foods, that's, it all works together. You don't have to consider it in one plate or one meal. In fact, combining a protein like a chicken with a rice or a potato is really bad for gut health, really bad for your digestion, not healthy for you at all. The starch is either going to be um, broken down and digested or the protein. So something's going to be left undigested, sit in your gut, putrefy, rot, and cause a lot of health problems and bloating and discomfort, especially as you age. On and on, I could go on about that. But let's talk about the protein sources. So mostly all foods have proteins, fruits, 
vegetables. Sugar does not. Sugar is just a straight carbohydrate. Canola oil, oils like that, just a straight oil. But we're not necessarily talking about those things. So let me tell you some of the foods that have higher percentages of proteins. Lent, I have it written down. Lentils, tofu, and it's also high in calcium. And tempeh. Tempeh is actually higher in, higher in protein than tofu. Tempeh is a fermented soybean. When you're buying tofu or tempeh, make sure to buy non-GMO organic only. Therefore, you're not having GMO soybeans because most soy is GMO. Um, also, when you're buying soy sauce or you can buy something called Bragg's um, liquid aminos, which aminos, proteins, so uh, because it's made from soy, right? And soy is a complete protein. So Bragg's liquid aminos um, is, what was I going to say? Is not genetically modified. So if you're going to buy a soy sauce or a tamari, I would suggest wheat-free, gluten-free, and also genetic... Um, organic or non-GMO. Okay, so make sure to look for that. So tofu and tempeh, great things to add that are high in calcium, other minerals, as well as fiber and protein. Now, some people say, I don't like it. I don't like it. You just got to know how to prevent, how to prepare it. And I can tell you right now, the best place to go for recipes and stuff, especially for vegan stuff, and you don't have to be vegan. I go to those YouTube videos to find great ideas, um, is YouTube. Okay, go, always go to YouTube, not blogs and stuff, because you'll see that Kraft has blog, has has stupid articles and all these high, um, all these companies with large budgets that sh have crappy food. So don't just go to YouTube. They have the, there's lots of people who share their recipes. Quinoa is another fantastic one. Yes, quinoa has some starch, but it's also high in protein. And I found with all my clients working with them over the years that quinoa has not caused fat for them. It does not lead to weight gain like rice or potatoes or pasta does in this midlife phase. Now, when you are consuming quinoa, you want to make sure you also have a lot of veggies with it. So you're not going to just eat a bowl of quinoa with a few veggies. You're not going to eat quinoa with some fish, let's say. You always want to have lots and lots of veggies. I do not, again, recommend combining starch, a starchy thing, with a protein, okay? So quinoa, hemp seeds are fantastic. They're high in protein, but they're also very, very high in really good fats. Now, to metabolize fat, to get rid of fat, we need good fats. You need good fats. So don't stop eating fats. And I know there's a whole movement of no oil, no oils. Um, during this midlife phase, you guys need good fats. That's all I'm saying. So coconut oil is a good fat. Hemp seeds are a great fat. Um, chia seeds are fantastic for fat. Now, because I'm talking about foods in this video, foods can cause, some people can't tolerate certain foods. So always, always know that there may be something I talk about that you, your body cannot tolerate. You don't have to force yourself to eat it. Learn and know how you feel when you eat a certain food or introduce a certain food. How does it make me feel? Okay, always. And if you have any questions about a food and how it makes you feel and you're unsure, message me on Facebook Messenger and I will help you out, okay? Sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds. Now, nuts and seeds are, yes, they have protein. They're not super, super high in protein. But when you're eating nuts and seeds, because they also have good fiber and good fats, so you're also getting good minerals, good fibers, good fats, which is a huge part of a healthy diet. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. You can actually buy pumpkin seed protein powder. Pumpkin seeds are very high in protein. I grind organic raw pumpkin seeds into a like a meal or a powder almost, and I use that in my smoothies for a protein powder, as well as I use chia gel for my protein. Chia is very high in protein, as well as good for calcium and other minerals and antioxidants, and great for fiber. Chia and hemp, fantastic. Hemp seeds, you can include, don't cook them, but put them on your salads. Also, when you cook veggies and you're about to eat, sprinkle some um, hemp seeds on that. And you can also add hemp seeds, blend them into a salad dressing using a blender. You can make a pesto with hemp seeds. You can add it to like pretty much anything, even your smoothie. I'm not a fan of it in my smoothie, but so hemp seeds. 
almond butter to get a good almond butter. Don't buy a cheap one. A good almond butter is also pretty good for protein, but of course, it's not the best fat, okay? It's better than peanut butter. Peanut butter is great for protein, but often the peanuts are not the healthiest foods for us. And if it's not a really good organic peanut, then again, it's not the healthiest fat for us, that's for sure. But a little bit is totally fine. But I do recommend almond butter. And like almond butter on celery, almond butter on some thin apple slices. Almond butter, you can make a peanut sauce with almond butter really, really good. And put that on a stir fry. Um, tempeh, oh, we talked about tempeh. So tempeh, half a cup of tempeh, 15 grams of protein, you guys. And calcium, high in calcium. This is no joke. Learn to cook it good. I bake it. I marinate it a bit and then I bake it and I cut it really thin. Really good, crispy, wonderful flavor. Hummus. Pretty good for protein. Yes, higher in carbohydrates. But it's not like you're going to eat a bowl of hummus. Um, buckwheat is a fantastic... It's, it's gluten-free. Buckwheat is gluten-free. I use buckwheat and there's I have videos on YouTube for a buckwheat wrap or a buckwheat tortilla wrap. What else do I call it? I have two videos. Use the most recent. I use buckwheat grouts and I grind them to make a buckwheat flour. You can also soak and sprout buckwheat grouts and use them like a rice or a quinoa. You can uh, make buckwheat, the whole grouts, into a cereal or a porridge in the morning that has no flavor. So you're going to have to flavor it. Buckwheat can be used in many ways. So you can also, like I said, go to YouTube, look up various ways to cook or make buckwheat. Fantastic. That's another good protein and mineral source, okay? Edamame, which are the young, the green soybeans before they're fully mature or whatever. And you can buy them with the shells, you know, like you find in the restaurants. I buy them shelled and I buy organic. Remember, when you're dealing with soy products, you always want to buy non-GMO organic. Um, so I buy the organic edamame and I boil them or cook them in a bit of water and until they're a bit softer and then I keep them in the fridge cold and I add them to my salads and they're so good in a salad. I love edamame in the salad. Very high source of protein and again, calcium. Other minerals too. And fiber, really good for fiber. Half a cup of edamame beans is 11.5 grams of fiber, you guys. I mean, protein, <laughs> protein. Oh my God. Lima beans and beans. So I have been loving lima beans or broad beans and I buy them at the farmer's market. Yes, you have to peel them and do them, but oh my God, I cannot get enough of lima beans, butter beans, broad beans, whatever you call them. Now I don't have weight to lose, so I can eat starch again. I'm through menopause, post-menopause. I myself, because I'm very active, I eat really healthy. I can include beans and lentils again. Now. Anytime, of course, when I'm cooking lima beans, I always cook them with other vegetables, green beans, broccoli, zucchini, and even a mixture of all of those things. Really important thing is to, to um, variety because you get protein sources from all the veggies, you get different minerals, you get different vitamins, you get different fiber, all of it from all the veggies, right? So having a variety in one meal, and especially in one day, is where you're going to get the best benefits. Spirulina and chlorella, which are two super powders, green powder blends, LJs, that I highly recommend. They are extremely high in protein. Now, you don't need a lot at once, right? Like one tablespoon of spirulina is really high in protein, but you wouldn't add a full tablespoon probably to your smoothie. A half if you're used to it, right? But still, another great way. So if you add up all these great protein sources throughout your day, you're going to definitely end up in all the protein. And also, you're going to get a lot of great healthy minerals and trace minerals. And minerals are what your glands need that produce the hormones. The best things you can consume for hormone balance in midlife beyond at any age is great minerals, trace minerals, vitamins, essential fatty acids, good fats, and amino acids, right? And all foods have amino acids, okay? So this is why we don't have to consider just protein, carbohydrates, and fats, because that way you're not considering nutrients that your cells need 
micronutrients. We don't want to look at always macronutrients. We want to look at micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, trace minerals. <laughs> you, so for lentils and beans, they are high in starch, but how you have them less high in starch is sprout them first. You soak them in water overnight or all day. You rinse them, put them through a colander, put them back in the bowl, put a lid on top, let them sprout all day. Rinse them again, drain them, put them back in the bowl, put a lid on top, leave them on your counter, let them sprout all day, all night. That will sprout them. You will notice when you go to cook them, they cook very fast and they are less starchy. Lower glycemic index. Perfect little trick. Um, kale, broccoli, spinach, all vegetables are great. Broccoli is actually really good for protein. Green peas are fantastic for protein. You can actually buy pea protein powder. It does bloat you, so not many people can use it. But you can buy pea protein powder. So peas are great for protein, right? So I thaw green peas all the time, and I use those in my salad every single day. I love green peas. Um, avocado is great. I think those are the ones that I wanted to cover. I would not go to vegan fake meats or TVP, textured vegetable protein. Textured vegetable protein, which is soy, can mimic hamburger and stuff, but it, you need to get non-GMO of that. So if you can find, I love TVP, I have some. I'm just writing the company now to find out if it's non-GMO because it is made from soy. So if you can find non if you can find non-GMO TVP textured vegetable protein, you got to flavor it. But you can cook it up like hamburger, you soak it and then it's like ground beef and then you can flavor it. It's fantastic. so good. <laughs> Add a bit of oil, so good. Um, but just make sure you get um, organic non-GMO and things like Satan, Satan or Satan is a gluten wheat product, so I don't really agree with it. It's what vegans have been had like in the 60s and 70s. But now we have a lot of problems, more problems with our gut and gluten, and it would not, it is not good for me at all. And again, can you get it non-GMO, right? It's made from wheat though. But yeah, you have to, you have to be like, I'd say you have to be super healthy for your body to process that properly. See, the thing is, is that most people even though they eat breads and all those things, their gut health, and because of eating those things, their gut health is not good. They may think they are okay, but it's not. Because the way the wheat is processed and all of the grains are processed now in our society in North America is really bad. It's, the seeds are often GMO. The way they store it is in these big grain elevators and they have to put stuff in it so they don't go moldy. So they're spraying the stuff, the wheat and the grains, with something to keep them, like preserve them. So that's all toxic chemicals. Then the fertilizers that are used on them when they are growing. So remember, it's not just maybe the wheat seed. We are talking about a whole bunch of things that are done to the grains now. That's why I do not agree with having breads, muffins, all of that stuff. Um, you can, I make my own. So if you're ever in one of my programs, I use buckwheat, I use almond flour, and what else do I use? Sometimes rice flour. Yeah, sometimes a rice flour. Um, mainly those with added a little bit of gluten-free flour, organic gluten-free flour, to make really, really, really good um, gluten-free stuff. I don't use junk. I don't use junk starches. I don't use corns, like all of those junk that they usually throw into a lot of the gluten-free products that you buy at a store. Why? Because it's cheap. They use cheap ingredients. So I have learned to make my own. So if you're in one of my programs, oh my God, you get amazing things like that that you can make yourself. That is not that hard. Use real whole simple ingredients. All right, well that is my talk on the protein. So remember that very few people are protein deficient, mainly they're nutrient deficient, minerals and vitamins. And that leads to the health problems. A higher mineral diet is a higher alkaline diet. That is also, so a higher alkaline diet and body helps our body to decrease inflammation, give you more energy, and help your body fight off viruses and illness because it increases your immune system and it helps your body to naturally detoxify. Most of the foods are good for your digestion too. 
So to eat, to better balance your hormones, to decrease inflammation, to increase your energy, and to be healthier, increase your immune system, that's what I teach. All of that. They're all the same types of food. That's what people need to understand. It's not confusing. It's that most people don't eat enough of all of those right and good and healthy kinds of food because the programming, the commercials, the blogs, the cooking shows are all go right against that. And they show us things that look good, taste good, but they're not healthy for us. So that's my thing. If you have any questions, hi, whoever's watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I have specials on my one-on-one -on -one right now. You can get one session, you can get three sessions. You can go six weeks, you can go three months with me. I have an amazing three months special right now for somebody who wants to work and you will transform over the three months. We're talking your mindset also. You will be living a healthy lifestyle. You will have lost weight. You will feel amazing. You will have more energy. You will decrease inflammation. You will, your tests from your doctors will come back. Your cholesterol, your um, blood pressure, all of that things, even your thyroid can possibly improve because I have clients that that has greatly improved through working with me too. And if you do that for three months, I'm going to tell you, you will feel like a whole new person. And don't you want to do that as we are in this phase and we're getting on with life? Like seriously, you get to choose how you live your life. You get to choose how you feel. You get to choose how you experience your day to life, life now and into the future. Okay. It's up to you, but also please reach out, get guidance, support and help because you can feel your best easily within you can start to feel notice great differences within two weeks of working with me all right so much love to you have an absolutely amazing night if you have any questions comment below let me know you've watched the replay make sure you're part of women creating healthy lives my facebook group and i'm also on youtube diana marchand instagram diana marchand 550 all right so much love to you bye-bye